Due to the immense success of my Imperial South Kensington campus tour, thank you for the love and support, your boy Devify is back, but this time we have the Imperial Medics campus tour, the Charing Cross campus in Hammersmith. But first, let's cue the sexy B-roll. Let's kick off the tour at Hammersmith Station, one of the two stations you'll be using to commute into the campus. The other one is Barons Court, but uh, we don't talk about that here. The London Underground has a large number of tube lines, and luckily Hammersmith Station is supplied by four of them. The Hammersmith and City Line, the Circle Line, the District Line, and the Piccadilly Line. There's a lot of lines. As you can imagine, having four tube lines provides really good connectivity to a lot of London. A 10 to 50 minute walk north is the infamous Westfield, which I think is the largest shopping centre in the whole country, and obviously very useful to have nearby. Aside from Hammersmith Station, which itself has loads of shops, King Street, the street right next to the station, also houses plenty of shops, restaurants, banks, a shopping mall, and plenty more that you can think of. Right across the road to the station is the Hammersmith Apollo, which is a large live entertainment performance venue where famous people perform. Now I know what you're thinking, no. <laughs> I don't perform there myself, I'm too big for that place. The walk from the station to the campus is about 10 minutes long and has plenty of shops and restaurants along the way. Too many to name so I'm not going to do that. You arrive at Charing Cross Hospital, the hub of Imperial Medicine. The hospital is actually quite large and despite not looking very aesthetic on the outside, it's a lot more modern on the inside. So I was just editing the video and I thought this is a very important point to bring up because it confuses literally everyone, especially Imperial Medics. Our campus is based in Hammersmith and the hospital is called Charing Cross Hospital. Now there is another location in central London called Charing Cross, but Charing Cross Hospital is not located inside Charing Cross, it's located inside Hammersmith. Confusing. I get it. <laughs> now there is also another hospital called Hammersmith Hospital, but that is located inside Hammersmith. So thank God for that, at least one hospital is correct. Hopefully that clarifies everything and clears up the confusion. Now this is the area that I personally have lived in for the past few years, and chances are if you're lucky, you'll probably end up here too, on Winslow, uh, Lochalin or Parfrey Street, just because they're so close to campus. In general, this area has plenty of bus stops with really good connectivity, and shops like Tesco, Waitrose, Sainsbury's, Boots, Cafe Nero, and even Pratt right at your doorstep. Let's now teleport to the other side of the campus because it's way more convenient for me and my campus tour. If you're coming in from this way, which is from Barons Court Station, you'll be walking in through the cemetery to the infamous Imperial College London medicine sign. Behind you is the Glenister building, which is currently home to a lot of PCR testing. That is fact by the way. Also, this is an exclusive, you know, it's not even on the Imperial website, but Glenister actually sports a newly refurbished lecture theatre. Well, it used to be a lecture theatre, but I'm not quite sure what it would be called now. Seminar room, maybe? Either way, it's really good what they've done because it'd be quite useful for group work due to its layout. On the Imperial website, you can actually find what it used to look like. You've also got some undersea charging with the USB ports. Whew, Imperial. We obviously obey the one-way system. It doesn't work. Next door is also a kitchen that you can use to cook your pot noodle breakfast in just before lectures and then downstairs are three actual seminar rooms that are used for smaller teaching sessions which I believe can also be booked out for by students. This is where the PCR testing is happening right now. Um, you know, it's really good actually, it's free PCR testing and you get proper certificate as well. Next to the Imperial Medicine sign is the Anatomy Block. On a lot of the floors there are these seminar rooms that are a lot like the Glenister ones that can house a lot of students and once again this is really useful for group work. Of course, um, you know, with the actual anatomy rooms I can't get any footage of that, so sorry, but I do have some footage of the clinical skills lab in the hospital where we learn, well, you guessed it, clinical skills. The Reynolds building is the actual heart and soul of the Imperial Medicine block. It was opened by Queen Elizabeth herself in 1976. 
Reynolds actually has multiple floors, so let's work our way from the bottom floor, which is the basement. So the basement actually houses a few small teaching rooms of varying sizes. A gym, which uh, the price of course is included in the Ethos Gym membership that you get, which is £30 for your whole degree. And um, <laughs> excuse the absolutely garbage video quality in this one, but you get the idea of you know what's where. There's actually a separate strength and conditioning room. Um, again, I'm sorry, I couldn't really work out how to turn on the light, but um, I'm gonna manually try and increase the brightness in editing, so hopefully you can see what's going on. Oh, this is lovely. Moving on, there's also a computer room where you can access the high-speed Imperial Gigabit Internet. Now we're going to go back up to the ground floor where we actually enter the building. If you walk right ahead, you actually have the bar area, which has lots of seating areas, a small stage and a pool table that is free to use after six. I think. The ground floor also houses the Reynolds Cafe, which serves a selection of sandwiches, snacks, ciabatta, salad, beverages, cold drink, confectionery, chocolates. Yes, Imperial made me say that. No, I'm kidding. They didn't. But that's what it says on their website. Imperial also says that the snack bar is the ideal place to relax or have a meeting with your colleagues throughout the day. By the way, if you're enjoying the video so far, I would love it if you could drop a like, subscribe, and maybe drop a comment too saying hashtag devify just for the YouTube algorithm and share it with your friends, especially those who are getting, you know, lost on campus. I'm sure we'll help them out. The first floor of Reynolds is beautiful. It has this large sofa seating area where students can gather to stress about the lectures that they're about to have, chat about other students and sometimes study. There's also a couple of vending machines that you can get stuff from. The first floor also houses the entrance to the Brian Drew Lecture Theatre which can apparently house 350 students, which is absolutely huge. This is where most of your whole year lectures will be held once you're in year two and onwards, and sometimes in year one. I'm just gonna give you guys angles of the lecture theater room from the hungover people's perspective. I hope it helps. Also keep in mind that pretty much all the lectures that are taking place here are recorded and therefore can be watched later on. Opposite the lecture theater are like 10 to 15 teaching rooms where tutorials are usually held. Some of these rooms you know, are quite small and can only fit a few students, whereas some of them are much larger and can obviously house a lot more. These rooms are great if you wanna practice you know, doctor-patient stuff because of the, I had to look this up by the way, medical examination couch is what they're called. And you know, most of these rooms actually have these. We actually did this in my recent Week in the Life blog. If you haven't seen that yet, what are you doing? <laughs> Go watch it. It's genuinely a really good video, you know, fast paced with educational and banterous content. Moving on to the second floor, which has two main things. The first of which is the library. Aside from having, you know, books, the library also has computers to use and plenty of quiet seating areas to do your work. Unfortunately, it's not quite as big as the central library in the South Kensington campus, but it's still pretty decent. Inside the library are also two problem-based learning rooms where again, you can do your tutorials and also book them out for your own learning. The second area are the computer rooms. Now these have a lot more computers in the library, around 62 I believe, and I mean, <laughs> there's nothing much else to say, you just, you just go do your work. But the area is mostly quite working, but there is a small section where it's silent study only. And this place is usually the better place to go than the library just because of the computers, you know. I think a lot of people prefer to go in, in this area, at least I do, if I do go to the library. Taking a little break from the... Uh, what are we taking a break from? The hard work, the hard work at firms. We're taking a little break from the hard work at firms and the campus tour with a little, little prep, prep subscription going. Thanks to prep for sponsoring this now. <laughs> They're not sponsoring the video. <laughs> Next up is Parsons House, which is one of the accommodation halls that Imperial offers. I'm not gonna go into too much detail here because you know I did cover it in my accommodation video, video you know, linked down below and over there I believe. Um, that video has all the juicy information about where to apply based on actual students' real life experiences. So make sure you go check that out. Moving on to the education center. In regards to student accessible places, there's only you know pretty much just a lecture theater that you can get to. This room tends to be used mostly when you're on placement at Charing Cross for teaching. And speaking of education, if you're not already following me on Instagram, why not, please do, <laughs> for all kinds of content, both personal and professional. It's at dev.gahan. Next up is the sports centre, and this has a lot of things. 
First up you have the gym. It's a bit small, but it does have some equipment. Didn't want to capture the people working, so didn't quite get the full B-roll. The second thing you've got is the sports hall, and this is used for sports such as badminton and basketball, and most commonly, um, <laughs> end of year exams. That is why I think most people remember this hall as, so probably not not happy memories. There's also a relatively large swimming pool which is quite nice and you've got some squash courts. Signing up to play squash is really cheap, it's like two pounds for like a two hour session and it's really worth it. Lots of fun and really good cardio. By the way if you're looking to park on this campus, don't. <laughs> it's kind of spenny, just saying. But yeah that about wraps up my whole campus tour. Peace.